So we're out playing on the rock with the new Bronco. And uh, because we moved our shocks a little bit, we're rubbing. Look at this. We're rubbing on the fake reservoir. <sighs> I mean, what's the point of these fake reservoirs anyway? They're just in the way and they weigh extra. And I don't know. I think I'm not dealing with it right now. So we're just going to give her the little snip snip. Snip snip. Snip snip. Just just a little little snip here. <laughs> Snip. Upgrade. Upgraded. Now we don't rub. Stupid fake reservoirs. What's the point? You don't even see them. Well, you kind of see them. You don't see them anymore, though. Ha! <laughs> Gone. We don't need that. I mean, come on. These little things, they weighed almost half a gram. We are saving weight, ladies and gentlemen. We are getting higher performance. Wait. Before you cut those, though, there's another option if you don't want to cut them. And what you can do is you can take your shock and you can flip it. You'll see a lot of people do this. There are various reasons as to why you would want to do this, but clearance isn't a horrible one. So you flip your shock, putting the reservoir on the bottom. Some people will argue, well, it puts your weight on the bottom and it's unsprung now, which is true, but these weigh like nothing. So it's not really a huge gain, but it's more about the clearance, right? Another reason to flip shocks is people will put oil into them and this helps keep the oil in the shock versus here, it'll just leak straight out. So you can mount your shock like so. On the front where your steering is, you wanna make sure the reservoir is facing to the front because otherwise, if it's on the back, when you turn, your tire most likely will hit on the reservoir. So putting it forward, you have a little bit more space. So again, you just wanna mount it like so, okay? And that'll give you clearance. Another little trick, which actually will get you more weight below the springs, is to add a little bit of lead. Lead is very malleable and you can kind of form it to the shape. You can actually buy lead rod. We're going to use this for something else later, but this is uh, by Bullet Weights. It's the name of the company that produces this and it will link that in the description below. And this is the uh, 3 16th diameter, which is unfortunately just barely too big to fit in there. However, if you take some pliers, you can flatten it down a little and not flat, but squish it down and make it keep it round, but just kind of squish it down so that it kind of spreads out a little and you can then fit it into your reservoir. And you can put a little dab of glue in there. These, uh, if you don't do it too much, it, it'll be tight still. So you can just push it in by hand and you get a little bit extra weight. Okay. So depending on how much you put in there, you can get between like one and a half and I think this is basically two grams worth of weight. And if you put two grams worth of weight on all four shocks in the shock reservoirs, you're going to end up with eight grams, you know, between five and eight grams worth of weight, depending on how, uh, how much you put in there. Let's see, I can't even get this out now. Ugh. So we're going to opt for cutting the reservoirs uh, for now. We do have some extra shocks if we ever wanted to try to go back and do the weight this way. It's not a bad option if you do end up getting some of this. Uh, this is also very, very cheap. I think uh, it was like five, six bucks delivered. And uh, just remember, lead is toxic. So wash your hands after handling it. Don't put your hands in your mouth. No exposed cuts. Getting uh, lead in there would be bad. So just my little disclaimer. Anyway, flipping these shocks is another little mod you can do. And uh, should help with your center of gravity and your clearance a little bit, especially if you put the lead weights in there. And if you do go the route of cutting these, make sure you save the reservoirs because you never know when you need little pieces of plastic for different things. And uh, we will more than likely be using these uh, in the future. Yeah, so we're gonna keep them. So we all know that low center of gravity weight is super important on these things, especially with how top heavy this is. So for our free slash super cheap mods, we're gonna go ahead and put some weight on top of our servo. And we want one of the most dense materials that we can really get. Um, now unfortunately, most of those are radioactive, but one of the good ones is uh, this gold that we have here. So gold is one of the most dense materials out there. So we're gonna stack on top of our servo, these uh, eight three gram gold hand stamped coins and that will give us tons of good extra weight on our servo. Uh, we just gotta find a good way to, to mount them to the servo. That should give us some great performance. Just kidding, we're not gonna do that. We're not gonna do that. But gold is very dense. 
also very dense is platinum, um, which is actually more dense than gold. And then of course, lead. Just slap some of these on your servo. Yeah, buddy. Seven grams a piece. Get them on Amazon, super cheap. They work. Now, I tried looking and I'm sure it's out there, but it was hard to find any sort of pre-sticky, nice and square, the size I was looking for, uh, pieces of lead. They use these as wheel weights and uh, apparently regulations have made many of the stuff being sold to consumers to be lead free or they're pushing for it to be lead free. So I think these are actually just steel, um, but they're pretty nifty. They're seven grams a piece and you can stack them. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna stack them on our rig right on the front of our servo. So there's four of them. So we've got 28 grams on the front and we just put one on the rear just to help kind of be forward bias, but also add some weight. And we're just kind of experimenting here. This whole deal with like 20, 30 of them. I don't even know how many are in there. 48 of them. Uh, I think it was $8. So enough to do multiple rigs if you wanted to go this route on the cheap. Eight bucks and you get a whole bunch of these little guys and you can put them on different places on your rig. Again, one of the keys is to keep all the weight as low as possible, obviously, um, but then also unsprung as much as possible. So anything below the shocks. So links, uh, that's kind of debatable. Some people say that they are unsprung weight. Um, but I, I, I kind of feel like they're putting extra weight on the springs, so you have to consider them sprung weight. Um, I've seen people do brass links, uh, which is good if you just want weight, I guess, but they're not ideal, especially if it's exposed brass, because brass is super soft, and uh, super soft metals like to get stuck on rocks, and so as you're dragging across the rock and your link's getting caught, you're kind of uh, just like glue on a rock, so not ideal. So these little guys, they're powder coated, uh, black. They also have just the raw metal ones. I like the black, it kind of hides them. Again, this is not gonna be a permanent answer to what we're looking for, but it is a good solution if you're trying to stay on a budget. Um, also, you can kind of mount them wherever you want. Like I said, they come pre-adhesive. Just peel them off, stick them. Um, they use kind of that foamy double-sided tape. Be aware, it will stay. You know, it's kind of hard to get off once you uh, get it on there. So the double-sided sticky tape usually rips off and leaves a little bit of residue, but I'm sure with some goo gone and stuff, you could get it off. Um, but I wouldn't put it on places like your body or on the chassis itself. Again, I think on top of the servo is ideal. Um, and then if you can get some on the rear truss, don't, don't attach them to it. Make sure they're not hitting your rear links at all, obviously. Um, but you saw, we were able to stack up four of them here. And again, there's no articulation issues. Um, now this is kind of getting our center of gravity high, so not ideal, maybe just go three. Um, but again, for eight bucks, you know, you've got a whole bunch of weights that you'll have plenty of for all your rigs and, uh, even just using one or two on top of the servo, uh, plus your brass and all those other things could come in handy, especially if you're trying to balance things or get that 60, 40, 60 weight in the front, 40 in the back. These can help you get that little bit extra, super cheap. I mean, again, what's eight divided by 48? What? 16 cents for seven grams. Pretty cheap, pretty cheap. By the way, did you know you can adjust the preload on these shocks? Some of the old shocks, uh, the stock ones don't, don't have this, but these, they have a little ring on them and you can just slide that ring up and down and adjust your stiffness or well, specifically preload, I guess. Yeah, just a little, just a little tip. Just a little tip. Slide it down and you're good to go. What? It didn't stay. Hmm. So a little trick you can do with that. Just bend it up a little bit, the, the ring, if you can like, get some pliers and just kind of squeeze it. Or you score it up with the X-Acto. And then the ring will stay on the score lines. Yup, yup. That's how you get a little extra preload. So this is the stock Bronco. The only thing we did was the bumper modification. And you can see what our incline angle is. We're at 43, 44, 45. The side hilling on the Bronco, we're at 27.
and we'll do downhill. So about 50 on that. And now with the extra weight, So that wasn't totally crazy or anything, but it wasn't insignificant either. It was a couple degrees on each of the different uh, hilling types, side hilling, the up incline and the down. Uh, so I bet we see a, a difference in the real world as well. So let's go ahead and do that. So this is uh, the stock Bronco. All we did was the bumper lift and slightly reposition the shocks. We're gonna see how she does. Definitely top heavy with that uh, hard body and tire on the back. Man, this is rough. This is rough. putting the weights on so I know when we did the control test it didn't seem like there was very much gain on the incline and this side hilling um, however I think this is gonna make a difference in a real-world situation so we've got our weights on there uh, one in the back so we've got a total of seven times four so we've got 28 in the front and just the seven in the back and let's see how it does in a real world situation. Because yes, it's making it still a little top heavy because the weight's not as low as we would like. Ideally, you'd want the weight as low as possible. But again, we're trying to stay budget and see if this just helps. definitely sticking better still it's hard to compete with the top heaviness of the hard body but oh yeah 
See? Huge difference there. And it is still top heavy. You can't really get around that, but like I said, at least our tires are a little more planted. Oh yeah, look at that go. Much better. We can even make we can even make it up this first hill here, this first little, little ledge. is hitting right here. Now we're high centering on our links. Maybe that should be our next project. So we went ahead and trimmed our slack shock reservoirs off because there's no reason for those. They're just getting in the way. We went ahead and added some weight to the front servo and to the rear truss. And we showed you how to preload your stock shocks. So hopefully this helped you out a little on a budget, basically five bucks for the weights. I think it's worth it just to have them around. You never know when you need them. So hopefully you found this all helpful and gave you some ideas on what to do on your truck. Um, be sure to subscribe. It's a click for you, but it means the world to me. And then you'll know when our next video on this Bronco comes out. Again, we're trying to do a series of upgrades or modifications that are on the cheap to get your truck performing better without spending a ton of money.